Hello, my name is Cyclones Oz, and today we are tracking a tropical low 05U once again, which is the tropical low up in the Coral Sea. Now, this tropical low is expected to become a severe tropical cyclone at some point in its lifetime. I'm going to be breaking down its forecast and its motions over the next five to ten days because it is expected to impact the Queensland coastline, most likely between a la uh, location between uh, Cardwell down to Mackay, and it will be a severe tropical cyclone at some point in its lifetime, and likely a severe tropical cyclone as it crosses the Queensland coast. We're expecting a monster impact on Queensland from this. If you are brand new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. I'm running updates on the Force 13 AU channel as well, so if you're watching from there, hello, thank you so much for uh, hearing my voice again for another 10 minutes today, but we'll be breaking down this forecast here in great detail. So if you want to see more stuff like this, then do subscribe and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Uh, we can see the tropical low up here. It's not looking too flash, actually. It was looking better a couple of hours ago, but it still has that pretty decent convection around the center, and it's still firing up some nice thunderstorms as well. So looking pretty solid, that's for sure. Um, and it is a strengthening system, of course, so it's going to be looking better and better as today progresses. Now, we're also expecting this to become the next named tropical cyclone on the Australian naming list, probably tonight and into tomorrow, uh, when it will pick up its name of Kiralee uh, from the Bureau of Meteorology. But again, it's just a waning game on, what, uh, on when that happens, and it will depend on the Bureau of Meteorology's silly gale rule, which is where three quarters of the tropical cyclone needs to have gale force winds for it to be upgraded into a tropical cyclone. If, if it was just done off uh, gale force winds, then it would probably be a tropical cyclone now because it's got winds of 35 to 40 miles an hour, which is 70 to 75 kilometers an hour. So it's definitely a tropical cyclone by strength right now, but it's not gonna be a tropical cyclone by that gale quadrant rule until probably about Monday evening by the looks of things. Or oh, actually, no, that's the assumed will be a forecast, which I will say is probably the worst forecast to be looking at right now, considering it does not allow the tropical cyclone to make the most of the very good conditions that it is currently situated within. You can see the tropical cyclone becomes a, a said tropical cyclone uh, by around Sunday lunchtime, local time tomorrow, um, when we're expecting the cyclone to attain those gale force winds around the center of circulation. And then it undergoes rapid intensification as it heads for reefs like Willis Island, uh, Marion Reef, and I believe Lehu Reef is down here, maybe. No, I'm not actually sure. Um, but it heads for these reefs through here and it rapidly intensifies until it gets to them um, on about Tuesday or Wednesday, becoming a severe tropical cyclone on Tuesday morning by the looks of things. And just by looking at this pressure, it's probably approaching category four status at this time. Generally speaking, these forecast models are pretty shoddy when it comes to wind estimates. Um, but I would say at this point, the Axis G3 model is doing a pretty good job with estimating the peak wind speeds of this tropical cyclone as per the intensity forecast. But again, I'm not really sure why their models haven't absolutely blown up the system like crazy because conditions of this cyclone seem really, really good. And I'll show you that right now, actually. But yeah, these are the current conditions. This is what we call a multi-model diagnostic comparison. So this is a comparison between the forecast models on factors say intensity, wind shear, sea surface temperatures, mid-level humidity, and track. Now these are very important with forecasting the tropical cyclone and also forecasting the tropical cyclone's intensity. Now you can see the intensity forecast here on the top left hand side. Um, the two major models that we have right now, the HWRF and the GFS model, both call for this system to peak as a category three strength on the Sapphire Simpson scale, which is category five on the Australian scale, which I do believe is a very plausible forecast at this time. And then you can see wind shear here is looking pretty good. It's within that 10 to 20 knot range. If it gets higher than 20 knots, then it's pretty bad for the tropical cyclone, but it looks decent for rapid intensification. The same story with sea surface temperatures, very good for rapid intensification. And mid-level humidity, you typically want to be above eight, um, 60 to 80 percent um, for rapid intensification, and it is still there. So the conditions are really good for intensification, which is why I'm slightly surprised that this cyclone hasn't been called to rapidly intensify more so than what it is actually in these forecast models. And it does intensify Wednesday and Thursday, it's still strengthening up to a landfall where it's gonna cross the coast with a pressure in the uh, high 940 millibars, which is very strong indeed. And will definitely be the strongest impact on the Australian coastline since at least Debbie and maybe Marcy of 2015, the strongest impact on the Queensland coastline rather. Um, making a landfall with a pressure of 950 millibars, uh, so a strong tropical cyclone right over the top of air um, before it moves rapidly inland and weakens substantially. But it remains a category one strength tropical cyclone as it moves towards places such as Huandan and Torrance Creek, 
Uh, so decently strong, decently powerful, and dumping a lot of rainfall at this time. Uh, there will be places inland that pick up over 500 millimeters of rainfall, and maybe even one or two locations that pick up closer to 750 millimeters of uh, rainfall. And I'll break that down in greater detail in just a little bit, but you can see a really significant impact is possible from this tropical cyclone as per the Access G3 model. Now, keep in mind, this calls for the landfall directly over the top of air. If we take a look at the GFS model, that's a very good consistently uh, consistency between these two forecast models. You can make a very good guess on where the tropical cyclone is going to make its landfall based off model consistency and congruence. So if multiple forecast models are saying the same thing or a very similar thing, then you can say with a higher degree of confidence that it is more likely to happen. Now, considering the GFS, which is generally the most accurate uh, model track-wise, and the Access G3 model, which is one of the more accurate models intensity-wise, are saying a very similar picture, I'm going to say with a very high degree of certainty that a landfall between Townsville and Bowen is very likely at this point. In fact, a landfall on the top of either Townsville or Air is probably very likely. So that's what I'm banking on right now. That's what I'm calling for. But then again, this is five days out. This is for Saturday the 25th at 2 p.m. local time. Um, so a lot can and a lot will change in terms of this forecast. The cyclone could swing further north or it could swing further south and impact a place such as Mackay or Hamilton Island head on. But it's going to be making a landfall in a very similar location to where Cyclone Debbie made landfall. And it's actually going to be a pretty similar storm all around the Cyclone Debbie where it makes its landfall and then dumps a hell of a lot of rainfall inland. Um, and then moves down towards uh, Queen, uh, Brisbane and southeast Queensland, which I'll get to in a little bit as well. Now, I've been talking up the rainfall factor from this tropical cyclone. You can see from the Access G3 model as this cyclone approaches landfall, a lot of rainfall gets driven ashore from the inflow band on the southern side of the system through places between Bowen, Proserpine, Mackay, and then down towards Clearview and well, as far south as Rockhampton by the looks of things. And when this rainfall in these shower bands gets banked up against the mountains along the coastline or the hills along the coastline, that's when you see rainfall totals skyrocket. So there will be places through here that get one hour rainfall totals of up to 50 millimeters, six hourly totals of up to 150 millimeters, and then 24 hourly totals of up to 400 millimeters of rainfall as this tropical cyclone gears up for its final landfall on the top of air. Now, anywhere around the destructive core of the tropical cyclone will also receive a lot of rainfall. You're talking four to 500 millimeters, but then on the northern side, you're not expecting as much. If it was to make landfall on air, Townsville might only pick up 200 millimeters before the tropical cyclone moves inland and fully clears itself off and just dumps the rainfall inland by the looks of things. When the cyclone makes its turn towards the southeast, it will also dump far more rainfall considering it'll be moving slower at this point, getting pulled around by the steering current. So places like Huandan down towards Matabara and Longreach could also receive some pretty significant rainfall totals as the cyclone makes its turn. You're talking for some locations 100 millimetres and then for the other locations maybe up to five or 600 millimetres. But again, this is looking a little bit more long range around days six and seven. So there's a lot more uncertainty and a lot more factors at play uh, that are driving this rainfall forecast. So I can't really be making a certain forecast Forecast on this point. One thing's for sure though, anywhere on the southern side of the center of circulation will receive the most amount of rainfall, significantly elevated amounts of rainfall. You're talking uh, some places picking up 500 millimeters, other places six or 700. So a lot of rainfall expected on the southern side of the system. And that's reciprocated in the 10 day forecast. Where the cyclone makes its initial landfall on air, you're probably looking at about 215 to 230 millimetres. Townsville itself only expecting 80 millimetres, but again, this has been a very quick period of around two to three hours. So flash flooding is certainly possible, but this will be coupled with also very destructive winds as well, with gusts up to 225 kilometres an hour. So it'll be one of those cyclones where you get that really quick impact, and it's just it just blasts through, hammers the area, and then moves on inland and dies off there. And it's going to be one of those cyclones, I believe, like Cyclone Larry of 2006, where it just came through like a tornado and ripped the place to shreds, um, but didn't dump too much rainfall. Because you can either get wet cyclones, or you can get windy cyclones, or you can get both. And that's when you're talking about the really destructive cyclones, the ones that have bring both of the factors through. But a lot of rainfall moving through here. Outside of Torrance Creek, there's one or two places that could pick up up to 400 millimetres. Huandon itself expecting 250, Pentland 250 as well. Charters Towers, maybe 150 to 200. But again, any change in the track, if the cyclone wobbles 10 kilometres to the south, that will bring the core over Charters Towers 
and you'll be expecting a lot more rainfall there. What's a lot more predictable is this rainfall that's going to set itself up along the coastline between Townsville down to Rockhampton. This is where I can say with a very high degree of certainty that there will be places outside of uh, Halliday Bay, Proserpine, Mackay that pick up up to 600 millimetres of rainfall and then down towards Serena and West Hill you could be looking at some places also picking up over 600 millimetres of rain um, along those hills and mountains along the coastline. That's where the tremendous amount of rainfall is very likely to fall and also as the cyclone moves down towards southeastern Queensland we know how wet the scenic rim is and around the Blue Mountains just outside of Brisbane and the Gold Coast they can be a very very wet place there so that's where we're expecting a lot of rainfall to also fall as the cyclone moves south there. We could be seeing some places up to 250 or 300 millimetres of rain in just 24 hours and, and one hour or six hourly totals rather could get to about 150 millimetres as the remnants of this cyclone move through in a very similar fashion to how cyclone Debbie moved through. So it could be a pretty similar story to that. Now, just to end this video off, I will briefly talk about the conditions that are promoting such a, a strong tropical cyclone. And this is why I'm calling for this storm to get to category five status at some point in its lifetime. It's certainly possible, but you can see sea surface temperatures around the uh, barrier reef around 30 to um, 31 degrees Celsius, maybe even in one or two spots where the storm is right now, 30 degrees Celsius. That's why it's pumping up this amazing convective activity and it doesn't drop below 30 more. In fact, it doesn't drop below 29 degrees until it gets right up towards landfall. And I believe the currents kind of slosh the water around a bit too much for it to really get up towards those bath water temperatures, but still 29, 30 degrees Celsius. That's enough for an incredibly powerful tropical cyclone. For comparison, I believe cyclone Yasi had temperatures of around 28 to 29 degrees Celsius as it went for Cairns. So there's hotter waters for this storm to deal with here. I just think it might be too large of a system to make full advantage of those. Um, I would be expecting a very similar situation to take place as Cyclone Debbie. Very, very similar in the sense of storm surge, which I will touch on in future videos when we get more of an idea of what the cyclone is going to be doing. A very similar situation in terms of peak intensity and a very similar situation in terms of rainfall and track. So Cyclone Debbie is a very good analogue for this tropical cyclone where it rapidly intensified in the Coral Sea, made its landfalls a very powerful tropical cyclone, moved inland and dumped a lot of rainfall across a lot of communities inland, um, down towards Brisbane um, and the Gold Coast. However, I do think that this cyclone, Kiralee, which it will be at that point, will be a little bit faster moving. So the tremendous rainfall totals are probably not as likely at this point, which is some very good news indeed, because we don't want ridiculous rainfall totals in already saturated communities around Cairns down towards uh, Innisfail and so forth. Um, and still the rest of the Queensland coastline has had a very wet start to 2024. We've also had a very wet end to 2023. I know a lot of people are saying what happened to the El Nino. Well, the El Nino has basically completely died off at this point. In fact, we could take a brief look at sea surface temperatures to explain the climate driver over in the um, Eastern Pacific and the uh, tropical Pacific, but sea surface temperatures, they've, they've pretty much recovered, to be honest, back to uh, normal. 27, 26 degrees is fairly normal for the Eastern Pacific, and you can see a really strong current moving across. So I would not be surprised if a La Nina formed towards the end of this year, uh, which will promote even more rainfall. But yeah, the El Nino that we had was certainly a bust. Keep in mind, no two El Nino events are the same, but I think the Bureau of Meteorology might have got their forecast a little bit wrong. But I guess in their defense, no one else foresaw a La Nina occurring midway through 2024, which is probably what we're going to end up seeing. Um, but yeah, and that's an interesting factor there. And I'll be giving coverage on, on that situation on this channel as well, and also across the Force 13 AU channel to explain the climate drivers around the Australian region that uh, promote tropical cyclone activity, because it is quite interesting. And when you understand them, you can have a really good scope of um, understanding regarding these tropical cyclones and how they develop and why they develop like they have. Now, now it's gonna be very interesting when this tropical low actually comes into radar range, which is the last thing I have wanted to talk about in this update. Um, if we can get some satellite imagery, please, that'd be fantastic. But it looks like the windy satellites have uh, baked themselves. But I believe the center of circulation is located around here and you can already see some of the cyclone coming onto radar imagery. When it gets down to about here is when it's gonna be very interesting to see these uh, rain bands rotate around the center of the cyclone. That's gonna be very interesting to see how it develops. 
Um, I just wish some of these reefs through here had radars on them so we could see uh, cyclones coming in, which would be a great investment from the Bureau of Meteorology. That would give them an extra two or three days warning for cyclones going for the Queensland coastline. It would actually allow for much better forecasts. So if anyone from the Bureau of Meteorology is watching this and you've got a 10 or $20 million budget surplus, then please do consider putting radars on like reefs like Marion Reef or Frederick Reef because that will give us a much better understanding on tropical cyclones that are actually headed for the Queensland coastline and no doubt that would definitely save quite a lot of property. It'll allow people to more adequately prepare for tropical cyclones. The Willis Island radar is fantastic. It gave us a very good understanding of what Cyclone Jasper was going to do, but a radar down here would definitely be a great buffer zone for places such as Mackay or Rockhampton down towards even Bundaberg, I guess, if cyclones do go for there, which um, I'm seeing a lot more forecasts suggesting that cyclones can go down there. The initial forecast for Jasper and the initial forecast for what's going to become Kiralee had both those cyclones going down towards Rockhampton and Mackay. Thankfully, though, that's not going to be reciprocated in the actual track of the cyclone. Once again, we're expecting that landfall between Townsville and Bowen, most likely on air. Now, make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you keep on watching to get the latest forecast updates. Leave a like on the video while you're at it and tell me how you can improve in the comments section down below. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for all of the new subscribers recently. It's been great and really heartwarming. But yeah, that's basically it for me, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.